Assembling a High Quality Model Steam Plant Part 13 Mounting the boiler on the baseboard and piping the duplex pump to the water tank and the boiler. And the first thing to do is to drill the holes to mount the boiler. These are not the finished holes, these are just pilot holes. And I'm going to double check that I have them in precisely the right place before I go and drill all the way through and find out they're not in the right place. I measured the position of the boiler mounting twice so it should be okay. And as usual I'm using my excellent DeWalt drill. The next set of holes to be drilled in the baseboard are 1 8 of an inch in diameter. These will be threaded 4BA so they don't need to go all the way through. And in the same way as I showed in the previous episode, once I've drilled the holes and threaded them, I will use some cyanoacrylate adhesive to harden the threads. Then I'll run a tap through again to clean up the threads once the cyanoacrylate adhesive is set. And it's a very strong way of holding things to the baseboard. But for the main boiler, I'm drilling all the way through and I'm going to use long bolts for that. I cannot risk the boiler coming loose from the baseboard. And it's not going to do that if it has steel bolts going all the way through the baseboard holding it in place. In any case, the HB6 boiler is going to be the last component to be mounted to the baseboard, and what I'm doing at the moment is using a 4BA tap to thread the 1 8 of an inch diameter holes that I drilled earlier in order to fix the condenser in place. As the assembly of the steam plant starts to enter the final phase, it's quite interesting, but you do have to be very careful now that everything is solidly mounted on the board that you don't damage anything on the board. I don't think that this 4BA tap is going to do much damage unless it dives off the board and sticks in one of the cylinders and scratches the paint but I'm not really on about that I'm talking about the copper piping the piece of pipe that's moving around is okay that's finished but when you first put the piping in place the ends of the pipe are quite sharp and will remove paint very easily bending copper pipe on the fly so to speak is something I do all the time and I'm quite lucky that way I can sort of see where the pipes need to be bent. If you're having trouble bending the copper pipe and doing it properly, there is an alternative. Go to a plumber's merchant's and buy some solder. This is plumber's solder and I think it's about 4mm thick and it's wound on a roll. All you have to do is unwind some of this solder from the roll, pretend it's the copper pipe that you're fitting, and just bend it to the shape that you want the copper piping to be to follow the contours of other things on the baseboard and get from point A to point B. All you have to do then is remove the solder from the baseboard, duplicate the bends in the solder using the copper pipe. And you could be really scientific and lay the piece of solder out on a piece of paper, draw around the solder and then just match up the copper pipe to the line on the paper. This would be quite useful if you had to make a lot of the same type of pipe runs. But thankfully most of the pipe runs I do are one-offs, bent to suit the application. Before I can pipe up the duplex pump to the boiler and the water tank, I need to mount it to the baseboard, so I'm drilling some holes all the way through, and then I'm going to turn it over just like I did in the last episode, and countersink the underside to take four wood screws which will hold the plinth and the duplex pump itself firmly on the baseboard. I temporarily screwed the condenser in place and here I'm piping up the exhaust from the pump to the condenser to make sure it fits. And now that I know it fits I can remove the condenser because I'm not ready for that yet and it's just getting in the way. The painting and fitting of the condenser will be the last job. Although this is a duplex steam boiler feed pump or twin cylinder steam boiler feed pump I want it to be able to run without feeding the boiler. Otherwise it would only be possible to run the steam pump in short bursts because it would just keep filling up the boiler. So I'm fitting a bypass valve. And by opening this bypass valve it will be possible to run the pump continuously. Well, almost continuously. I think it would probably wear out if you did that. With this steam plant it will be possible to run the pump without filling the boiler. Because if the bypass valve is open the water is not going to go in the boiler because it will take the path of least resistance which is straight back to the tank. First of all I need to split the water outlet from the pump and I'm using a T-piece for this with a slight modification. The red stuff on the bench that you can see is some Loctite 542 that I spilt and as it's quite expensive stuff I'm mopping it up with the threads of the T-piece. In this clip you can clearly see what I'm doing. I've made a threaded brass collar that screws into the pump and also screws into the end of the T-piece and here I'm attaching the short piece of pipe that feeds the boiler's check valve. 
and without rounding the nut with my barco spanner, which never rounds nuts, I'm just tightening up the nut onto the T-piece. The next piece of piping to make is the very long piece of piping that goes from the other outlet on the T-piece to the water bypass valve, which is fitted to the tank right at the top. You'll see that in a moment. And here is the aforementioned water bypass valve, and I've fitted this to the tank for a reason. It's not a good idea having this down in the middle of the plant because you could do several things. You could burn your fingers, you could trap your fingers in the flywheel, or in the pump, or even in the motion of the steam engine. So I thought that the best place to put this bypass valve was right on top of the tank where you can get at it very easily. I really wasn't happy with a one piece pipe feed in this tank because it's very unrealistic to have a piece of copper pipe that length. So I fitted an inline double union, and I think it looks better, and it's in the right place, just to support the vertical pipe that goes to the bypass valve. Most of the videos on my channel show me actually doing the job, and I never really say, here's one I prepared earlier, and if I make a mistake, I will freely admit I've made a mistake, and the first attempt at this piping wasn't good. I just wasn't happy with it, so I started again and got another piece of pipe, cut it to length, bent it to the right size, fitted it, and now everything's fine. Everything looks good, it lines up, and it's time to test it. So I'm putting some water in the water tank. That seems like a very good place to start, and the first thing that happened was the water ran out of the water tank onto the board because I hadn't tightened the union, so I tightened up the union and fed some compressed air into the pump to see what happened. Um, and nothing happened. And did I expect anything to happen? No, because at some stage, someone has sealed this with silicone rubber. Now, silicone rubber is a very good sealant. I don't have any of it in my workshop at all. I use it in my bathroom. Well, now and again, I use soap most of the time. The problem is, it tends to ooze out on the outside, and it oozes out on the inside. So when you first fit the silicone rubber, internal parts work fine. But then when it goes hard, they stop working. And this is what's happened. The valves are all gummed up with silicone rubber. I can't prove this, but in a moment I'm going to have a look inside the valve chest and I think you'll find that that is the problem. No matter how fast the pump goes, it's not pumping hardly any water at all. I think there's a tiny bit coming out of one side. The main pump rods on the pump are a little bit dry, so I'm just giving them a bit of lubrication. And this will make the pump put a little bit more pressure on the valves, as the valve rod seal is much better with some oil. And a short while after applying the oil, all of a sudden, some water starts to come out of the bypass pipe. Not a lot, but it's better than nothing. Time to look in the water chest, I think, and see what the problem is. It's really stuck fast. You must never, ever use silicone sealant for steam engines. This took ages to get this off. It was so firmly stuck. And once I got it off, can you see what the problem is? Look, the stuff's everywhere. It oozes outside and it oozes inside. Only one of the valves was loose. The rest were gummed up with silicone rubber. One of the valves was loose. The other two needed a screwdriver to get them to move. And the fourth one was nearly impossible. I had to use a pair of pliers to get this out. It was so firmly stuck. Anyway, I got them all loose. And I thought what I would do is use some tea cut just to make sure that they seat properly on the seats. With all of the valves moving freely, I refitted the water chest cover. I didn't use a gasket because there's still a layer of silicone rubber on the actual metal, which should do the job. At least it's not going to ooze all over the valves. I'll see how it goes. If it leaks, I'll have to scrape it all off, which will take forever, and I'll fit a gasket. When I put some air into the pump, water starts to come out of the bypass valve, and it's water that's under pressure, so the valves are working. When I try and block it up, I can't. So it will pump against boiler pressure, and it's not 100%, but it's better than it was. I think there's some air getting in somewhere. Before I finish the plant, I will be going around it and making sure that all of the union nuts are fully tightened. But that's it for the moment. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.